So when we need to screen our patients for COVID-19, we need to screen them each visit. And that can be a hassle with all the paperwork, having to scan the documents, or even just trying to upload it into uh, our dental software. So uh, what we can do through Google Forms is have a patient fill out a questionnaire um, and all the data gets collected into a spreadsheet. So if that patient, after the fact, tests positive for COVID-19, then it'd be a lot easier to sort that list, uh, find that patient's name, and quickly find the, uh, their responses to the questionnaire, just so that uh, we can look back historically to see what they had said and when they were in the office, if we need to do some contact tracing. So um, let's, this is an example of the spreadsheet uh, where the data would be um, sorted by, uh, the, there's a timestamp, and then also by the patient's last name, then first name, and then uh, each of their responses as you go across, including their temperature readings. So um, when I'm gonna close out of this window just to show you how I set it up. Uh, so with Google Forms, what you can do is set up a bookmark, or you can put it in your Google Drive. So easier, it's much easier if you're on an iPad. A staff member would have the iPad in the reception area at the intakes uh, area, and uh, they would just click on the, uh, the bookmark, right? So you get that. And um, you'll be on a screen here. And this is more the user screen um, where you want to edit, if you want to edit any questions, if you want to uh, add any other uh, pieces of information to that form, then you can do so on that screen. What you do want to do, though, when a patient comes, is you want to click on the eyeball here and it says uh, preview. So you click on that, patient's in the office, then you type in their last name, okay, and then you go type in their birth date, you don't need to enter in the date that this form was uh, was submitted because it will automatically populate that section on the spreadsheet. And then we have the next question where we talk about, ask about the travel. Within the past 14 days, have you or any household member traveled outside of Canada, including the United States? So for example, if you say yes, uh, then it says name of country and other. So what you wanna do is you wanna type in the country, uh, say um, Italy, and then it directs you immediately to a screen saying recommendation, give patient a mask to wear, return home right away to self-isolate for 14 days, immediately call primary care provider or telehealth Ontario to determine next steps or complete the online self-assessment for next steps. So it's pretty much helps your staff members um, uh, with in directing them what's the next step for the patient. So for example, we're gonna submit next, and then uh, here, what's the purpose of your dental visit today? And there is a box here that says, patient was instructed to return home to self-isolate, and you submit it. So that one goes right into our spreadsheet. Let's do another scenario. So for example, if we put, uh, say I came into the office, And then um, in the past 14 days, have you or any household member travel outside of Canada? So in this scenario, we're gonna say no. Last time we said yes, and it redirected us automatically to say go home, self-isolate. Then the next question uh, is in the past 14 days, if you have any house or any household member tested positive for COVID-19 or had close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19, example, someone in your household or workplace. And if you say yes, it would redirect you to that uh, um, sent that other um, screen that would say to send them home to self-isolate. Uh, but if you say no, then it continues on in the decision tree of the form. So here is the symptoms that we can select from. And uh, you'll ask the patient, have you experienced any of the following symptoms over the past 14 days? And this was uh, adapted from the Ministry of Health uh, questionnaire and also the self-assessment tool. So it starts off by asking for fever, chills, cough, and so on and so forth. And what I've done is I've added um, a redirect 
in case they click on uh, symptoms that are definitively going to call, be a problem, then those will redirect you to the self-isolation message. And then there's other symptoms I felt that could be because of allergy season. So we would just want to continue to probe further. So for example, nasal congestion, um, headaches, and uh, unexplained fatigue and falling down more than usual. So those are the ones that would redirect, would allow us to continue on with the questionnaire. The other ones would redirect us right directly to the, to the self-isolation, because really you don't want any patients with fever, chills, coughing, uh, sore throat, difficulty swallowing, uh, sneezing, definitely not, uh, or even a loss of sense of smell, since we've, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of the most recent data that th that is happening in some of those cases, the positive cases. Uh, so those are the situations where it will redirect you right to the self-isolation. And then the other ones that are kind of iffy, um, those will continue on. So for example, if I went to, and I said that I have uh, nasal congestion, which I do because I'm, I have aller seasonal allergies, then it would go into the next, um, area here, which asks us to do the temperature measurement with our in-ear thermometer, which we have with disposable sleeves, or if you have the contactless uh, thermometer, that's also good too. Um, so if their th temperature is 38 degrees Celsius or lower, then that would allow us to continue on with the questionnaire. If it's over 38 degrees Celsius, then it would redirect us to the self-isolation and unable to measure would also allow us to continue on with the uh, with the questionnaire. So let's go, for example, here, 38 degrees Celsius or lower, click that. So now it's up to the staff member to determine if they are COVID-19 screen negative, COVID-19 screen positive, or if it's still unknown. So if, for example, they had all of the responses to no, as none of the above, then um, you would click negative. Uh, and if there's any of the responses that are yes, that are significant to COVID-19, then you would click the positive. And if it click on this section, this little um, radial signal here, then it would um, direct you to the self-isolation message. And this would uh, allow you to continue on as well. Uh, so let's go with negative, just so you can see what the next question is. And what is the purpose of your dental visit today? Oral pain, infection, swelling, bleeding, trauma. These are more um, here in the questionnaire because of the current pandemic closures of the offices. Uh, so we need to clarify, especially just legally and with public health, for public health reasons, we need to clarify that, you know, we are seeing this patient for uh, legitimate emergency reasons. And then there's elective dental treatment here for example, dental hygiene, fillings, crowns, etc. Uh, so this is more for our when Ministry of Health has, has given us the go ahead to open our clinics to elective dental care and um, or the patient was instructed to return home to self isolate. So we'll go with that elective dental treatment, submit it, and it's been recorded. So what we can do now is see how there's two different tabs. So this is the patient tab, you know, with the preview. And this is the tab where we're editing. So we go back to the editor, the editing page, and you see questions and responses. There's four responses. So if we click on the responses there, and you see this little green icon or thumbnail here, and that is the Google Sheets. So you click on that, and it has all of the data that you've entered at any time with the time and date stamp sorted by last name and uh, obviously the uh, their responses. So you can always refer back to it in case a patient is uh, contacts you after the fact and says that they were um, tested positive for COVID-19, then you can look back and easily retrieve the data. If you have any questions about the Google Forms, you can contact me at my email address. What I can also do is share this. So what you can import these questions right into your own Google Forms, which will save you a whole lot of trouble. And then I can help you with uh, just customizing it if you wanted to learn how to add or subtract any of the options or edit the text.